Hey, what's up, everybody? It's After Hours Crush. Back with you once again. And it's been a while. <laughs> um, and almost every time I've tried to make a little bit more of the uh, kind of workout content that I've been attempting to put out in the past couple years, it's kind of cropped up. Um, so, starting off with the cat scratch fever I got a couple years back, it has been increasingly a little bit more difficult, a little bit more difficult to kind of get back and swing at things. Um, during that time, you know, your body kind of regresses in certain aspects. Um, when you're not putting in two, three hours a day, three days a week at the gym, things tend to, to happen to you. Uh, my weight, for some reason, hasn't changed all that much. I'll tell you right now. Um, right now, I weighed myself this morning, and I've been sitting at or around between 360 and 370 for the past three years, and it really hasn't. I get dipped below 360 for a little while, and it, bounce back up to like 367 and kind of hit around 370 and it's just been kind of ping-ponging back and forth for the past year or so um and a lot of that is because with me having to step back from the gym after the cat scratch fever uh one thing to kind of pop back into my life was i used to have high blood pressure as a teenager and then i got into working out a little bit walked all around my city and ended up dropping a little bit of the weight. But that was also 20 years ago. <laughs> so um, right now I have relatively high blood pressure and it's not fun, you know what I mean. Um, my doctors have informed me that I have limitations on how much I can work out. I can only work out for about an hour a day that is cardio and weight training, both. Uh, I've been trying to ease into doing more workouts and whatnot, um, and just trying to work by those rules, because as much as I want to do cardio and lift weights and, and lose weight and get around, at the very least, I'd like to get around 300 again. I'm not in terrible shape, my job kind of keeps me in, in relatively good shape because I, I work in retail, so I'm lifting boxes and switching and going back and forth and sweating most of my night away. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's not the easiest path to walk. You know? um, I try to stay as active as I can, um, but even even still a couple years after, the initial run of uh, cat scratch fever is just not the same. I mean, my my body has days. You know, I, I think anybody who has any type of an event where they almost die and that sucked. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I wish I could tell you that my body is even back to, to just to some sort of semblance of normal. But working with the high blood pressure and, and trying to move around that, the medication they had put me on was absolutely horrendous. And I was on the lowest dose possible of this medication. Like, I'm normally a very up and going energetic guy when I'm awake, but this stuff just struck me to a crawl. And I get off of work, come home, lay down, and just sleep. And when I'd wake up, it'd be I'd be dragging for the first two hours. Normally, it takes me about twenty minutes to get up, moving around. This stuff, it's be like a slog. It's terrible. So, but I'm I'm trying to formulate a way to get back into things. Um, I mean, thank good. Like last year, they did the first real big physical test that I had really kind of done. Um, took a couple of days, we actually took a real vacation, went down to Florida and did three straight days at Universal and a day at the Atlanta Aquarium. 
and honestly it was probably like <laughs> as much as my feet were like oh my god um it's probably some of the best i felt as far as physically goes in a quite a while um and we're gonna try that again this year um we're gonna be going down taking a vacation to universal and physically i feel better than i felt last year in that, in that aspect mostly because my job has kind of ramped up and i'm getting my butt kicked every night but that's kind of helping um so i think what i'm going to be doing as far as anything physical goes um Let's just be doing stuff like push-ups and sit-ups here at the house. Um, probably going to be doing most of my cardio, actually just walking around the neighborhood. Um, just to kind of beef up a little bit before then. Uh, I have keep, kept my standard supplementation. I might take just, you know, you know uh, BCAAs as needed. Um, I do take a, like a GNC, like a daily supplement pill. Um, pretty much the stuff I was taking before. The only thing that I really can't take now is, you know, pre-workout because that stuff jacks up, you know, your, opens up all your vessels and then jacks up your blood pressure. Um, so it's like as much as I'd love to be able to take the, the 5150 I have in my kitchen right now, it's just not an option. Um, but you know, uh, I, I stay trying to keep active. I stay trying to keep doing what I can. Because to me, like, I'm all, like, this year I'll be 40. And everybody knows, like, everyone's like, well, once you hit 40, you'll never come back. I'm like, nah. I've already almost died twice in my life. If anything, I can at least drop some weight after I'm 40. I wholeheartedly believe that. Because... I have to believe that there is more to being someone who can who can just be a little active than just be a little active. You know what I mean? And I I think I have a point to prove in that aspect. Just saying that you do things to me is not enough. So. As much as it's been like a personal kind of slog this past couple of years, I got to have a point to go to. And right now the, the target long term, and I don't, I don't know how I'm going to hit this long term. I'm going to try. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about baby steps right now. The long term goal is 300 pounds. That is the long term. Right now, like I said, I'm sitting around 370. And physically, I feel probably as good as I felt in a while. Um, I'm feeling about as good as I felt before the calf scratch fever. Um, the 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 leg has actually been weirdly well recently, but you no, know, that can change at any time. And anyone who's had cellulitis in the past can tell you that. That can change literally instantaneously. One day you're good, next day you're you're sitting in the hospital bed. That's it's just the way that it is. You have to tread lightly. I tread as well as I can, but I also stay as well as I can. You know. Um, so the long term goal is three hundred. But we're taking baby steps. Okay. If one thing that I've learned in this is that just saying this big marker in the street and saying, that's what I want. We're going towards that. You're, 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 you're more apt to slide back and that you take smaller steps because you think, Oh, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm right there. And you never do. So right now, I want to get under 360 and stay under 360 consistently. That That's goal number one. And that is going to be from doing bodyweight exercises and walking around my neighborhood more, 
and just overall upping that ante a little bit more. Um, now, one thing that most people also don't realize is when you do stuff, like you do these big events, like going to a theme park or going to an event per se, that can be a false marker because your body deals with that in such a way where you can lose 10 pounds in a day. You can lose 15 pounds in a day just in water and sweat and basically your body going into overdrive to compensate for what it has not had to deal with in quite a while. Um, and I, when I was doing the Arnold's every single year, and I'd lose 10 pounds in a day just in sweat. And trust me, if you've ever been inside the Columbus Convention Center, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you walk inside that convention center and you're instantly in the sauna. You just are. So it's, it's all about recognizing where your true gains as far as your receipt goes over time and working those baby steps so the, the the first goal is 360 and under consistently and then we can move on to stage two stage two is going to be probably another uh, 10 to 15 pounds loss on a consistent basis and when i say consistent it would be at the very least a minimum of a month underneath that barrier because you can do this yo-yo type of crap and go back and forth and back and forth and drive yourself crazy. Or you can see that these things are happening and you can just work towards and work towards. Um, so that that's really the main thing right now. These small baby steps working to improve and just be that consistency and, and, and be that a constant motion. Um, if there's anything I've learned from reading Making the Game by Triple H, that you know these little markers, these little uh, roadblocks that you have to go over that you set yourself is a massive key to success. And one that I believe, truly believe that we can do. Um, and that starts today. So it is not going to be easy. Anyone who's close to the age of 40 will tell you that it is not easy. It is also a little bit of an undertaking for someone of my size because I'm 370 pounds. Weirdly enough, I don't know a lot of people who are 370 pounds and have the same physique I do, but my body type is weird. You know, I don't feel like I'm that heavy to me. I mean, everybody is just kind of like mentally conditioned when you're growing up is like, well, if anybody's over 300 pounds, they have to look a certain way. They have to act a certain way. Well, obviously they, they have to have problems here and they have to have problems here. And me, I don't feel that way myself, but I know 370 is just a stone's throw away from 400. But I also realize that 370 is also a stone's throw away from going down that scale, too. And you just got to put in the effort to get there. So. I, I felt worse in this life, trust me. I have felt worse and been slimmer. That is, that, that, that's just a simple fact to me. I, there was a point where I was uh, like 260, 270, and and like treating my body like total crap like like i was snacking down on absolutely nothing but i mean like like i was thinking i was drinking energy drinks and just slogging you know two liters of mountain dew and i mean i i think i've told this story before but there was a point in my life where i was knocking out a 24 pack of mountain dew a day i am damn lucky to not have diabetes right now and that, that's just the straight up truth i mean i would just sit there and just knock them back all day long and i go to work i worked in the factory just knocking them back all night long sit there two liter chuck on the two liter drop it go grab another one and the only thing that i think saved me was my change in 
right? A change in the attitude. And I had to change. Everything had to change. And I think that's why I'm in such a place where I am now. Where even though I'm heavy and I'm on the heavy side of heavy, in my opinion, I don't feel it. Probably the worst thing I can say that I feel every once in a while is just having to get up and crack my back a couple of times a day. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is just a kind of a thing to tell you where I'm at, how things have been, and like people disappear off of YouTube and just never give you a thing. And my thing right now is, you know, as far as everything else in my life goes, so much has changed. Um, I mean, of course, you guys have seen me do a couple of videos on here. Uh, just kind of testing the waters for, like, um, the Apple content I was doing, which I'm probably going to do a little bit more in the future. I've done some reaction videos here and there. But uh, I want you guys to know that we're staying active. We're still rocking and rolling. Um one thing, of course, I have been doing, too, is the Columbus Crew stuff. Um, you know, I spent a lot of my free time recently, and just in the past year or so, working on Shawshank SC and working on making a positive difference in my community because, to me, that matters a lot. That, to me, that... that I, I live in an area where things are getting better. People are improving the, the area. We're, we're seeing more activity centers. We're seeing you know, more people get involved and want to go outside and do things with their neighbors again. You know, And I want to be a positive effect for change in that way. One of those ways is through sport. And I truly believe that if I had embraced that when I was younger, I wouldn't be you know, 370 pounds now. Uh, the closest thing I was really into was a little bit of weightlifting. I wasn't committed enough then, if I'm being honest. So, to me, soccer is my favorite sport. And when I started Shawshank, that was something that I really wanted to, at some point, put a focus towards. Was to make sure that if a kid wanted to do something soccer-related around here, they had the opportunity to do so. And in working at the sports store that I did a couple years ago, there are some people who come in with their kids and be like, I, I know, I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm sorry, Susie. I can only afford so much. And that type of stuff just broke my heart because you could tell that the parent wanted to get the kid into it and the kid wanted to be into it. And sport is such a social necessity to me for, for some kids. They will know nothing else besides their sport. Whichever sport they choose, whether it be football or basketball or baseball, soccer, wrestling, whatever it is. And I've wanted to be a positive reinforcement for that. So that that is something that I'm working towards long term for Shawshank as well is to be able to get gear in the hands of kids who need it. Um, and there, no, I would love nothing more than to be able to, to do that and have that run alongside, if not be a more primary function of Shawshank than uh, crew support. Because long-term support of clubs like the Columbus Crew involve bringing up the youth in the right way. You know, the players of today are the fans of tomorrow, and in a lot of ways are the fans of today as well. And if we're going to grow the sport in the United States, we have to work towards improving access to the sport, in my opinion. So, that is working a lot of my attention as well. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll actually drop the uh, Zazzle link in the description below if anybody would like to take a look at any of the merch uh, and purchase a t-shirt. Um, I was actually just drinking out of it earlier. My Shawshank Pilsner glass. Um, I gave away a cup last year, a little coffee mug, which is nice. 
So any money that we make will go right into Shawshank. That that's it'll be a rotating thing. Um as as of right now, that money will just go back into the uh the organization. Um and if I can work out a way to do it, I'd love to be able to just even if we can like support one kid, you know. One kid is one person, and one person is a lot, because one kid is one family, and one family just grows out. You know, it's exponential. Even if I'm only helping out one kid this year. One kid is better than no kids, as far as getting them involved and, and getting them engaged in sport, getting them engaged in soccer long term. So, there's that. Um, as far as the channel goes, like I said, I'll probably be doing a little bit more, uh, reaction videos probably down the line, mostly stuff that I like and I kind of want to bring back a little bit because, you know, I, I think there's a lot of music out there that some people haven't heard. I'd love to get more ears on certain bands and songs and, and stuff that I really identify with. Uh, the Apple stuff, I'm kind of working on what I want to do with that. Because, sorry, I don't have $4,000 for a Mac Studio. I'm not Marcus Brownlee. I'm not I Justine. <laughs> you know, my name's not Linus. So, uh, the tech stuff might be a little bit more down to earth, a little bit more commentary based um, going forward. Um, most likely, if we do another Crew and Coffee podcast, as a matter of fact, it will be hosted on this channel, most likely, or my alternative channel under my real name, Doug Russell. So keep an eye out on that. But we're almost at, we're just past 22 minutes. So I want to thank everybody out there for watching. Um, we're going to be making some steps and some strides this year. You know, the pandemic has sucked for everybody. And it's time to get out of the damn rut. Started with this guy. So thank you very much there for watching. You guys have a good one. Peace out.